So while I was waiting for Stalker 2 to have its own release, which is something I was looking forward to playing on the Xbox One or Xbox Series, the game was delayed and it was sad because I was given Game Pass for free from Microsoft at one point, so I was looking forward to trying that game out and see how good it is, but unfortunately it was delayed, so I had no way of playing Game Pass anymore at that point because there were some games I just wanted to play after my six months expiration, I just decided not to renew it. But it doesn't mean it was a bad library of games. So all of a sudden, as of like recently, we were just shadow dropped this Stalker Trilogy. So this is the Stalker Trilogy known as Legends of the Zone. All these three games were originally PC exclusives, but now you guys can play them on the PS4 and Xbox One. So the three games we got on here is Shadow of Chernobyl, Clear Sky, which is a prequel, and a sequel called Call of Pripyat. So they all came out from 2007-2009, and most people would have modded the game, because this game actually has, well actually, I should be saying games. These games actually have mod support in terms of like remastering graphics or trying to add in some unused content, which is something that the fans have been trying to do. And something we've been waiting for was Stalker 2, and I guess since all three games are now here, you can actually just play this just to keep you guys waiting on the whole Stalker 2 whenever it comes out. It's set to come out September 2024, but we'll have to see what happens, because there have been a few delays here and there. So in each of these games, you're dropped into this post-apocalyptic world, and you're doing chores for people, as you can say. You can actually talk to some random people and offer you some jobs and whatever, and then you can actually do it. There's way marks that'll show you the way to where to go, and then you're all set. Each of these games plays similarly, as far as I can tell, besides the graphical, like, minor changes, as you can say. But there has been some gameplay tweaks here and there, but the oldest was Shadow of Chernobyl. There's no, like, waypoint of showing this task, that's because you need to keep progressing through the game before you can get ahead of yourself. So all these three games, you guys can actually get them in a bundle, or you guys get them separately. If you guys just don't know if you're gonna keep playing these three games or something along the side, and you don't think it will be for you, you guys can just get them separately. They're $15 each, but it's just best getting them bundled because it's actually, believe it or not, like 10 or $20 cheaper. I should also mention it's a first-person shooter, and the game's been used in the X-Ray engine. Now, I wouldn't recommend you hold a weapon all the time when it comes to talents, because otherwise people might view you as a hostile. So, you might as well just put it in the holster, and then you'll be all set. You also got a knife, you got a pistol, maybe a saw rifle if you want to, or maybe a shotgun. But, for me, it's like, playing on a console, it's a bit weird, but I think you guys will get used to it. The aim assist on the console version just feels weird, but somehow it manages to work. Somewhat. These games aren't going to hold your hand or anything else besides finding your waypoints. There's going to be landmines everywhere, so make sure you guys get some good gear and watch out. You have, to little, you have this little mine detector noise, which indicates to, to like, if it's far, if you're like further away, it'll make less noise, but if you're getting closer, it'll make a lot of noise, so make sure you watch your step. So there's going to be some crazy psychopaths in your way, and there's going to be some wild dogs and monsters trying to come after you. Even zombies, too. And yes, they can shoot you with a gun. It's not like Resident Evil type zombies, if you're, like, if you're like thinking of that way, but that's not it. Everything is just post-apocalyptic in this thing. Yes, it's just more of like, if you guys play Metro series or maybe Fallout. There's some voice acting here and there, but there will also be a big wall text of screen. So you'll have to read like what they'll tell you. But if you guys aren't sure of what to do, the task will still be set on in your little log inventory. So everything will be there for you. So any like quests you have on like completed or whatever, like they'll still be there. Anything that's completed will be disappear. Unless you go to the completed task. The thing is, survival is the key. You're gonna need a few things. Well, besides weapons, as I already just told you guys, but you're also gonna need some food, so that way you can keep your hunger up. It doesn't show that there's a hunger meter, but 
the game once in a while will will have this little hunger meter or like so icon showing up and I definitely recommend you find some food. It'll be like bread, diet sausage, or this canned open food. There'll also be some energy drinks too. Depending on which game you play, there's going to be these things called emissions. Which, you'll need to find a shelter place in order to live. Because if you don't, then well, you end up being dead. So it's kind of like one of those storms which kills you and you got to be very careful. Like I said, it really just depends which game you're playing. Not, I, I have played the first game, I haven't really encountered that. And I played most of the first one. I think my first one was Call of Pripyat. And I remember just like playing it on the desktop and whatever too. And yeah, I, I can't really remember my experience besides talking to some enemies and uh, they tried fighting me. So I was firing back at them. Because you know, it's called self-defense. But like not everyone's gonna be your friend in this game so be careful there's also multiplayer which i find interesting which i didn't even know I had multiplayer until i just started recording gameplay for this game and i don't know if it works but unless they use game spy servers then this could be a completely different story and let me tell you guys something too after you complete these tasks you'll get some money i keep trying to figure out what to do with this money i'm not sure I don't even know. Like, I tried looking everywhere for, like, a store or something. It's just... I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumbfounded or something. But I don't know how much money I'll, I have in the game. But I've done so many jobs, I just don't know what I'm doing. But to get some, like, weapons or whatever, too, you can, like, loot some bodies. Whether they're already dead or maybe they're just, like, you already killed them. Sometimes people might give you something. But who knows? It's all up for you in your own choice. You can do anything that's like good or bad. It's it's more of like it's up to you type of thing. But if you guys are looking into playing Stalker 2, you guys should definitely give a chance to give you guys should definitely give yourself a, a chance to play the three games that were previously released as a PC exclusive. But from what I've heard, I think the console release is going to get mod support. If that is true, then cool. That would be a thing. Because it's been the mod support for several years at this point. It's been like over 10, 15 years at this point. So these games are old, old. So they ain't new. So keep that in mind if you guys find some outdated stuff. But that's fine. These are older games. It's crazy how these games were never released on a PS3 and 360. I'm not sure if they would have sold well, but... If you guys want to look into more reviews, the Steam charts have always given these games overwhelmingly positive reviews. So, I don't think there's been many people that have bad things to say about these games. So if you guys are excited for Stalker 2, this is definitely for you. Survival is the key. Know who you should trust, or at least gain some trust, because you have a reputation system. That if you want a good reputation, people will not try shooting you 24-7. So you better keep your reputation good. Because otherwise, you may not get past this game. Or games in general, as this is a trilogy collection. Each of them do have their own different... Each of them have their own different stories and similar gameplay. So keep that in mind. There's also going to be some times too where you're in a stressful situation. Like, there'll be these little orb things trying to shoot you, too, so... If you... If you see these orb things, like, trying to fly without shooting you first... Definitely hit them first before they get you. I was stuck in this laboratory, and I had no idea how to get out there. And thankfully, I found out how to do it, and... I managed to get it done. So... Keep this in mind, you might get some stressful moments here and there. But I think overall you might enjoy the game for what you'll experience.